we originally had wanted to paddle from you know, Mongolia straight through the border into Russia and onward into the ocean. That was our dream, past the Chinese-Russian border. But we quickly learned after research and connecting with people that without $50,000 in bribe money or a private security detail, that there was no way we were going to get into that area. Um, in particular, in the last 10 years, it's become very, very tight, that border there, uh, and more and more dangerous to be there. There were all sorts of military activities going on. And so being you know, the wise thinkers that we are, we thought, well, I don't know if that's worth it. Maybe we should just take out in the border, at the border and take a train. So with that said, here we are. We're about to take off the Mongolian section of the paddle and then drive back to Ulaanbaatar and then take the train around. So going back across the step, we were pretty glad to spend the night here in the Gur and we're welcomed in and you know, they shared the food and they also shared their homebrew vodka. Basically, it's homebrewed from fermented milk. And a, sh milk. a shot's not a shot, a shot is a teacup. <laughs> so it's not just like, oh, knock it back, it's like gulp, 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 gulp. <laughs> and our driver, very cheeky, would have the saucepan, kept pouring us a teacup and kept going around and around. And after a few, I was like, you know what, I'm actually not feeling too good about this. I'm going <laughs> to go to bed. And I remember leaving the go and... And you three were like, ah, oh, Crystal can't handle it. And she's going to bed, you know, she's weak. And I'm like, oh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and so I wake up really early the next morning. <laughs> and next thing you know, this little herd of baby goat and sheep loved our tent. They climbed it multiple times. All the meanwhile, there's three ladies inside with a hell of a hangover. <laughs> I won that battle. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, just as we got back to Ulaanbaatar, um, Becca was bombarded with all of these phone calls from worried family and friends, and all of these images of Zach on social media. And uh, she, it, was, it was intense. She had spent this entire month in a really quiet place, and I think had gone deeper and deeper into a journey of grief. And when we got back to Mongolia, she, or excuse me, to Ulaanbaatar, uh, she suddenly realized that it was time for her to start a different journey. And so she decided to go home. As you can imagine, this was a huge shakeup for all of us. So there were a lot of emotions. And I think it was a really melancholy transition for us, um, really kind of the up and down nature of this trip. Uh, and at that same time, with all of these nerves, we're hopping on a train to Russia. And we're about to ride the Trans-Siberian Railway with an expedition's worth of gear for 10 days. And going to Russia, it was definitely a culture shock. And I've been to Moscow and the Far East Russia, it's totally different. It's like a whole new country. And as we're traveling the train, you see these style of buildings that remind you of like the Soviet era. And also a lot of the buildings actually torn down in rubble. So it makes you wonder, you know, was this a result of the war? And we also started to realize how gnarly the weather gets. Like these monsoonal storms are now in full rage. And here, like, the rain is just pelting down, and I remember the lightning going off. And I didn't actually hear the crack of the lightning. It hit this light post, and it's like a big pop sound. And all the lights went out, car alarms were going off. And it's like, whoa, this is, <laughs> like, we're going to be on a river in potentially the same sort of storms. So uh, it was a big wake-up call to what we're getting ourselves into. And this is the Amor River, like from Mongolia. And when we got in the headwaters, it was maybe seven metres wide. Imagine, you know, not even as wide as the stage. And suddenly we're looking at anywhere from two to five kilometres wide. And by the time you get to the delta, it's 12 kilometres wide. So when you picture a big oil tanker or a massive ship like that, they look like a little matchbox toy car on this river. It's, it's huge. So we're on this concrete block in this industrial area just before sunrise, packing up our kayaks. And there's like cigarette butts and glass and these big cranes and the water is just gnarly. And we knew this water had DDT and benzene and raw sewage in it and that we were beginning a really, really different part of the adventure. The lower Amor, there was so much unknown. There were corrupt officials. There, um, there was organized crime uh, around the extraction industry there. There was a type of weather that we weren't used to dealing with. I mean, these monsoon storms could kick up in a half hour to an hour, and all of a sudden there would be 80 kilometer per hour winds and lightning everywhere. And not to mention, you couldn't actually get out of the river just anywhere. So oftentimes on one side of the river, there'd be these willow fences. So it was just willow and marsh. And on the other side of the river would be 10 foot loose dirt cut banks. And then there's the bugs. 
This is my ankles, by the way. It was crazy because the mosquitoes come at dusk. You go to sleep with a chorus of mosquitoes singing to you. And then you wake up, they're still there, but you think, oh yeah, the sun's gonna come up, we're gonna be out on the river, we'll get away from them, it's all good. And then there's the gnats. The gnats like to come out at sunrise and they'll stick with you the whole day. Uh, you'll be wearing these nets and you could see them crawling in front of your eyes and then they actually wiggle through like they were that tiny, but they could do damage. Mm. Don't mean to gross you out, but imagine, you know, make my hot chocolate because I can't drink coffee and, you know, pick them out, pick out about 20, not exaggerating, exaggerating here. And then I start sipping and I feel a bit of a clump. And I'm like, oh, hey, there's more mosquitoes. So I fish out another 20. So it's like, and that was a morning ritual. I was losing my mind.